hello, I'm Mark Harrison, it's uh, 8 o'clock and uh, this is Henry's Blues House and um, nice to be here again, though of course I'm not really there, I'm here in Oxfordshire where I have been doing lockdown and um, I'm just going to check that the thing is working because you can't trust these things. Uh, it's a bit like the old days when you had to wait for a television to warm up and so I'm waiting for this particular thing to warm up, see if it's there and it doesn't appear to be at this present time. So let's have another look and here we are, right, seems to be working, um, I hope it uh, carries on working throughout what I'm going to do. Uh, I do all my own songs and um, uh, quite a lot of them are about blues. Um, I'm not sure whether they're actually blues songs, doesn't really matter does it? They're songs and the um, original blues people thought that they were doing songs, they didn't um, understand genres, that came much later. And um, so I'm going to do a set of songs on the theme of the blues world, the life lived by blues people back in uh, Mississippi and uh, when all the original stuff was being made in the 20s and 30s. So I have some tunes about the way of life uh, and about some actual people who existed and um, were artists as well. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that. Um, thanks to Jim Simpson for asking me to do this and um, I came over and played uh, at Bull's Head in December in what was emphatically the worst weather ever anywhere. So thanks again to the people who came and uh, we had a pretty nice night. It took me two and a half hours to do half a mile into Birmingham and three hours to get home not far. Um, but in the middle we had a nice time. So I hope everybody is okay and um, as we carry on with this strange times that we're living in uh, and it occurs to me that um, one of the legacies of this is that perhaps after all this uh, I don't wish to make light of the serious but <clears throat> I'm thinking in terms of doing selective social distancing whereby you keep away from people not because you think you might catch something from them but because they piss you off right on to the songs so um, the first song I'm going to do is called Big Mary's House and Big Mary's House is about a juke joint that existed in the Mississippi Delta in the 20s, 30s I think, run by a woman called Big Mary who in fact wasn't big and um, although all you blues people will know what a juke joint was um, I like to explain things because um, lots of people that come to my shows don't know anything about blues and um, so I don't assume knowledge. Uh, a juke joint was a sort of rough bar or shack that was put up on the corner of a plantation or edge of a small town where people could go and drink and party at the weekend after what was a terrible week's work in the fields. And at these things they would um, get very drunk on the hooch that was made by the person who ran it which sometimes was the wrong side of being poison. And sometimes they would shoot each other. Seems a long time since I did an actual gig now, but I, I can tell you we've done, me and the band have done quite a few gigs where we've been pretty keen on people shooting each other. Hasn't happened yet, but we still live in hope. So Big Mary's house.
Sticking with, I guess, the way of life or the culture uh, at the time when all this blues music was being invented. Lots of it came from even older music, even older folk songs, <coughs> mixtures of um, those and spirituals and whatever names one wants to give to these things. And there were characters that make appearances in these uh, songs. Uh, and one is uh, High John. And uh, High John, sometimes John the Conqueror, John the Conqueroot, was a fictional mythological character that appeared in a lot of stories in what would now be called Negro folklore. Uh, and it was a kind of spirit character, a will-o'-the-wisp, who could be rude to the master and then disappear at will. So it was a very appealing figure for people who had such awful lives with no power at all, who couldn't speak back to the master, but High John could. And I think um, it remains an appealing idea that you could go up to someone you don't like and tell them to piss off and then disappear. This guitar, by the way, was made in 1934. It's a national Trojan. And for those of you who are interested in it, it's in open C, which is why I have to keep checking the bottom string. So here's the song, Hi John. <laughs> Yeah. 
Hazardous occupation, house without foundation. What am I gonna do? And I had a revelation, gave me the inclination to improve my situation. So here's what I'm gonna do: gonna make like I some slide uh, and this song will be called Honey Boy uh, and it's about uh, well taken from a book by uh, David Honeyboy Edwards who some of you may know some of you may have seen <coughs> who was the oldest surviving original Mississippi Delta blues artist until he stopped surviving a few years ago He was about 96 at the time and uh, right up until his death he was still doing gigs at which he played some and also um, he told stories from his book and his book is uh, here it's called the world don't owe me nothing it's the best book ever written about anything uh, but especially about blues music it's not really about music it's about his life it's an oral history he spoke it and some people wrote it down uh, and i got a couple of songs from reading it and I'm just going to read a little bit of it that um, relates to this song I'm going to do now which is called Honey Boy uh, and um, uh, he uh, says the following in the south they had that vagrancy law that hog law I got pulled up for that a number of times that means better have a job or don't be seen on the streets the police pick you up in the street during the day when everybody's working 
What are you doing walking around here? Get in the car. They carry you into jail and they give you four or five days and that time was spent out in the fields working the cotton. Don't you know so-and-so out there? His cotton growed up with grass and he can't get nobody to work in. You could be out there working. But he didn't want to give nobody but a dollar a day and nobody wanted to work all day in the hot sun for a dollar. The way to get by all that, stay in the house all day long. I was like a groundhog. Come six o'clock, I'd take a bath, come out like I'd been in the field. They don't know whether you've been in the field or not then. That's the way I done. Uh, his uh, book, his life, describes all kinds of uh, brutality, I guess, a very, very difficult way of life for black people in that area at that time. And um, there's a lot of fun in it too. Of course, it's a, it's a wrong to think that these people were all miserable all the time. They weren't at all. Um, people whose backs are against the wall, they often find ways of having fun and having a nice time despite the difficulties of their circumstances. Money Boy had a mostly okay time. He had some terrible jobs like on the levees. In the levee camps life was pretty brutal. And most of the time he seems to have wandered around kind of hoboing and um, getting himself with various women and staying with them and then moving on. Did a lot of playing on street corners and a lot of avoiding work uh, in the fields, which uh, you can't really blame him for. So the musician life was a way of keeping away from all that. So this song contains um, some references to all of these things from his life and it's called Honey Boy. Can't remember the year I was maybe fourteen when I headed on out. When I headed on out. Well, I picked up some tunes. I picked up my guitar. to the country fries Moving around with those good old friends of mine I got stories to tell Of the trains and the tracks Of a man going out Man not coming back Of a long lonesome road Of a big laughing face Of a no justice world In a tumble down place
was having hard times I got stories to tell Of the trains and the tracks Of a man going out A man not coming back Of a long lonesome road Of a big laughing face Of a no justice world In a tumble down place mention that I have albums and um, uh, if you'd like to get an album of mine um, they're on my website which is www.markharrisonrootsmusic.com <coughs> uh, I've got six albums uh, five studio one live and I'm doing songs from I think all of them uh, this evening and one or two that aren't on any that one was from the Crooked Smile album. Big Mary's House was from the World Outside album. Hi John was from the latest Panoramic View. And this next one, called Hard Work, is from the first album, which was called Watching the Parade. And, uh, of course, at this time, the, uh, the population of Mississippi was um, theoretically free. They weren't slaves, but they replaced slavery with something broadly similar called sharecropping, whereby they worked ferociously hard on a plot of land and they had to buy all of their materials and their groceries from the store on the plantation and then what it had cost them was deducted from what they were given for their cotton uh, meaning that they often ended up with little or nothing. So this song's called Hard Work um, and um, it's about hard work for anyone at the minute. There's talk about greater recognition for people with tough jobs rather than cushy ones. It would be nice to think that that would gather some momentum.
trailer earlier on today for the show tonight. Long Gone Miles was man <coughs> and his surname was Miles, his nickname was Long Gone. And um, that was a pretty good nickname, blues people did very very good nicknames. Um, unlike us, uh, we would have called him Milesy or something equally pedestrian. Um, but in the blues world, he got a whole sentence for a nickname. And Long Gone Miles um, was the best friend, I guess, um, confidant, if that's the right word, of the great Lightning Hopkins. And he used to drive him around and buy his booze for him. And Long Gone Miles had a reputation for saying almost nothing and scaring people. Don't know if he really was scary, but he looked it. And um, so nobody wanted to mess with him. And much less did they want to mess with Lightning Hopkins, who <coughs> more or less invented being cool uh, in ways that have never been surpassed since, or indeed equalled. There's a picture of the two of them sitting in the back of Lightning's Cadillac in a book I have. And uh, they're grinning from ear to ear and swigging booze out of a brown paper bag. They look like the two happiest people who've ever lived. And um, Long Gone Miles used to drive um, Lightning to some of his better gigs where Lightning's got booked by white folk later in his career at things like the Carnegie Hall. And um, like a lot of the rediscovered blues artists, um, he, they expected him to be what they had in their heads as an idealised picture of a blues artist who was some bloke from the fields. But Lightning Hopkins wore a zoot suit and a hat and shades and was the very opposite of the hick from the fields but 
the money was good, he'd do the gig, so Long Gone Mars would drive him there in the Cadillac and he would get changed into dungarees, do the gig, get back in the zoot suit, and they would rush off to the liquor store. Here's the song Long Gone Miles and um, it's about their friendship, I guess, and their story. <laughs> Fine day, country boy, knocking at my door. He came right in and slept right on the floor. Never said a word, seen but not heard. Now look at long, long miles. Sitting in the back of a Cadillac, look at long, long miles. Passing the bottle here and back, look at long. difficult times there is a, a link if you feel like buying a ticket for this event there's a PayPal link hovering about somewhere and um, anyone who feels like paying for a ticket thank you very much for doing that <coughs> next song is also um, based on but not about one of the original blues artists Sun House and um, So now it's one of the great inventors of all the music, as you will all know, of course. Um, he um, was rediscovered. And um, by the time they rediscovered him, unfortunately, he was permanently pissed. Uh, and that made him a little bit difficult to deal with. He could still play and sing perfectly well in his raw and emotional way. Um, but he was off his face and you couldn't get any sense out of him. So it was an interesting commercial decision to make a live album on Sun House, which they did, didn't get released at the time. Uh, I have it on CD and um, it begins with 15 minutes of absolute drivel. 
And um, what he's heroically trying to do is explain what everything is about. That life is all about blues, blues is all about life, it's all about men and women, heartbreak, treachery, that's what life is all about. What I suppose we would now call relationships, uh, which is a word I don't like. It's a pretentious long word. Why is it so long? I don't know why it's so long. And you won't find that word in the blues lexicon. In fact, they didn't talk about relationships. I don't think they had very simple ways of dealing with things if their relationship went wrong, uh, which was that they either buggered off or firearms came into play. What I think uh, Sunhouse was trying to say, I've put in the song um, and it's called What Sunhouse Said. This song, um, by the way, uh, catapulted to great fame on national radio when it was on Radio 2's Pick of the Week show. As presented by Annika Rice, it came immediately after ABBA and before Miley Cyrus. Uh, I think that's a playlist the average blues artist has not been on. Anyway, this song then is about relationships. It's my only song about relationships and um, it contains everything I can think about as to why they might go wrong. What you think's the best of you is actually your worst So many things in this life that ought to be reversed What you think's a blessing is actually a curse So many lessons to be learned
Okay, uh, and the next one is a sort of gospel song, back really at um, the sort of life that people had in that place at that time. And gospel music was invented really by people who were waiting for the next life because this life was so gruesome and they were hoping that the next life would be better and that they would all be together in that next life. I guess it's the nearest thing I have to a kind of song, a religious song. Because the idea of uh, seeing again your nearest and dearest in the next life remains a, an appealing one and it's understandable why it would, uh, even if you don't have a religion as such. And um, I am um, come from Coventry, I grew up in Coventry and we didn't really have religion in the, in the family. Not much anyway, not that anyone was cynical about it or anything like that, just didn't do it. Didn't know much about it and um, we used to go to church for the regulation things, weddings, funerals and the other one, I never remember what the other one is, christenings, oh yes. And, um, and when the hymn started playing, my family, there were tons of them in those days, they used to shuffle up out of the pew and stand there and start going, because they didn't know the words. So I grew up thinking that all hymns were instrumentals. <coughs> this song has a sing-along chorus. I wonder if there's ever been such a thing as a sing-along chorus in an online concert. I shudder to think how anyone would have tried to organise that. So um, if you cop hold of the chorus here, do feel free to join in and I won't know. Meet on the other side, sooner or later, we're gonna meet on 
on the other side. Meet on the other side. Meet on the other side. Meet on the other side. We can't tell each other. We're gonna meet on the other side. Meet on the other side. Meet on the other side. Sooner or later, we're gonna meet on the other side. Meet on the other side. Meet on the other side. Next song is a sort of blues way of living or looking at the world, I guess, called Ragged. And it's about having a sort of what you might call blues sensibility if you happen to be doing a PhD in it at the University of Port Cabin somewhere. <laughs> Okay, 
just going to do a small number more. Uh, and uh, the next song I've not done live before also contains some of the most challenging guitar playing I have yet created. So um, if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. One thing that people wonder about uh, in blues world, looking back at the history of it, is the absence of protest. People wonder, especially with a hindsight and a revisionist view of things, um, these people seem to have not protested. Why were they not protesting? Well, the simple answer to that <coughs> is that it would get them killed. These are people who lived in constant danger at any given moment. They could be wiped out, attacked at the very least, uh, or possibly killed. Uh, and um, that's why they didn't protest. But of course, it didn't mean that they didn't notice what was going on around them or what was happening to them. Um, but you just try not to think about it and you kind of look at each other, don't you, in these circumstances where people know that there's nothing they can do. So that's what this song is about. It's called Poor Show.
theory that um, what happened in the, I guess in the 40s was that um, when mechanised cotton picking was invented and people were uprooted from the doing the job by hand and they all had to go up north and they all um, went up to the industrial cities of Chicago and Detroit and um, worked in factories and plants and meat packing and stuff like that. And uh, for the first time they were all together in large numbers in um, an urban setting whereas they were dispersed in small communities down in Mississippi where white folk could control them but when they were in bigger numbers in the cities they perhaps started to feel confidence and strength in numbers and I think that may have led at least indirectly to the civil rights movement. This song contains the um, a reference to the chicken sandwich train, which is the name of my live album. <coughs> um, and basically they, they got the train up um, to Chicago, Detroit, and um, because they're very poor, their uh, friends and relatives would give them something to eat on the train. They give them chicken sandwiches. And um, so for some people, the train became known as the chicken sandwich train. So um, now that I've explained that, you'll know what that means should it ever come up in conversation with anyone else. So um, this is about that move uh, from the south to the cities and uh, how I think people felt, uh, may have felt, when that was going on. It's called Changes Coming Here. Get up off the ground 
Right, uh, I'm going to do just one last one now. So thank you very much for watching. If you've been watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you feel like buying something or paying for a ticket, please do that. That'd be much appreciated. Uh, and when we're back out, I hope I can come back and play over in Birmingham. That's something that Jim puts on. And keep an eye on my website, which is a very, very good website, done by someone else, obviously. Um, <clears throat> I'm on Facebook. You can um, find Mark Harrison on Facebook. I've got a musician page, but I'm doing also some online concerts myself on my own personal page. So if you feel like friending me on there, please do so. Who thought we'd live to see the word friend become a verb? Anyway, if you'd like to friend me, that will be uh, good too. And um, keep an eye out for future events. So I'm going to do this last song now. It's called Shake the House. We're back where we started at the beginning, which was about juke joints. And um, this is in a juke joint. Uh, I read somehow um, that they sometimes used to dance so vigorously in these rather fragile structures that they would sometimes crash straight through the floor and apparently they carried on dancing on the ground below. Seems like a decent metaphor for life or way to proceed anyway. So thank you again and this is Shake the House and then there'll be a sort of ugly bit at the end where I make my way to switch the thing off and then it won't switch off and stuff like that. So here's Shake the House. Dives live a fleeting life, sleep 
I'd make my way over to end the proceedings. Hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs>